Now, maybe you were such a person, maybe you were a person that wasn't very religious at all. And you were living life like the rest of your extended family. But something came in your heart and you said, you know what, I'm gonna take this guidance seriously. I don't know how it happened. Maybe Allah made it happen through some YouTube video. <laughs> it happened through some khutbah you heard or a friend or however it happened but you decided to make a change for the better in your life and when you start changing the behavior in your life the first people to see a change in you will be your own family they will notice it they will notice that you're not the same anymore you don't talk the same you don't act the same you don't go to the same places you don't even have the same friends anymore and this necessarily happens when you take a turn towards Islam necessarily you start losing friends because your old friends used to do pretty bad things and now you can't do those things with them anymore so you suffer a loss of friends and at the same time your, st your family starts saying you're acting a little too weird and for the young man the family might even say what's that thing on your face you forgot to shave what happened to you and the girl starts wearing hijab and the family might even be in shock and this is a Muslim family mind you they'll say take that thing off your head you're gonna go out to the wedding looking like that? I can't sit in the car with you like that. What do you think we are? What do you, all of a sudden you're the Islamic role model? Who died and made you Shaykh? <laughs> that all of a sudden we should be looking up to you. Remember what you were like last year, man? You were the party animal. Now you're gonna go make salah, yeah, seriously, please. We know what you're really like. In other words, this, now, now, not only have you lost your friends, from your family, you get the nastiest kinds of sarcasm and criticism all the time, all the time. Every chance they get, they say something to you. They say something about your beard. They say something about your habits of making salah. They say something about you going to the Ikhna convention. They say something about putting your children in Islamic school. They say something about sending your children to Sunday school or you getting up for Fajr or Isha and going to the masjid. They'll have some comments for you and those comments hurt. They burn pretty good. <laughs> This happens to young men in the audience where their parents start telling them to stop hanging out with their other Muslim friends. Don't go to the masjid, don't waste your time. SubhanAllah. But Muslims themselves, you think non-Muslims are averse to Islam? Have you seen what Muslim families are doing to their own? What parents are doing to their children? I know of cases myself where parents said we will not pay your college tuition. We will not look for a wedding made for you until you take that hijab off. We will not do it. We do not accept you as our daughter until you take that thing off. We will not show our face in public with you. You can't go with us anywhere. This is the mother telling, and you know what they'll say, what's amazing about that? They'll make you feel bad about yourself. They'll tell you, what kind of daughter are you? You should be ashamed of yourself. You're embarrassing your parents. We're Muslim, but we're not Muslim Muslim. We're not that, we're not those kind of Muslims. That's not how we do things in our family. That's what they'll say. Our family is different. We don't do things like that in our family. That's those masjid people. Don't be like those masjid people. That's what they'll say. And you know what's amazing about that? If you look at a portrait of your great-grandparents from back in the day, good old great-grandpa's got a big old beard and you can't even see grandma's face. So who's being true to the family and who's an embarrassment to the family? See, this is Muslim families today. And you're in the midst of all of this. And you know what happens? Because you've made a decision to turn towards Islam. If an enemy of Islam came to you and said, abandon your religion, you'd say, oh yeah? I'm gonna be even more committed. You would become energized in your zeal for the religion when the enemy attacks Islam. We'd get even more fired up. Muslims get fired up in the craziest of ways. You somebody draws a cartoon about the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and Muslims go crazy and they'll burn some other guy's car up or break somebody else because they're really angry. <laughs> but we get fired up when, when something happens, some, something questions the dignity of our religion, even if it makes sense or doesn't make sense. But when your own family comes and says, look, I love you. I'm worried about you. I don't want you to become this way. This is the way of the people who fail out of college, who don't have a career, who have miserable lives. I don't want you to fall into this extreme. Somebody is, somebody is putting you under their influence. You need to get away from them. I'm worried, genuinely worried about you. And there are parents like that in this audience, actually probably not in this audience, but their children are and their parents are actually home worrying what are they learning at the Ikna convention. There are a lot of kids like that here too. And your parents are calling, what, you, you know, 
why did you have to go to this place? The next thing that's going to be there is the FBI is going to knock down your door because you came to the Iqna Convention. They're paranoid. They see, see stuff on TV and they become paranoid. And you're in the middle of all of this. And it becomes hard to hold on to your religion in the middle of all of this. It becomes hard. Because it's not the enemy of Islam that's pulling you away. Who's pulling you away? Your own family, your own parents, your own husband, your own wife, your own brother, your own cousins, your own in-laws. They're the ones pulling you away. So how do you deal with that? The most inappropriate response to this pressure is anger. And you know what? That is the most common response too. Your parents start yelling at you for growing the beard, and you're a young, hot-blooded guy. What do you do? Oh yeah? It's the sunnah. You can't tell me what to do. You're following culture. And I'm trying to follow Islam. And you slam the door in their face. Way to go. Because that's what Allah wants you to do. Yell back at your parents. And they're just take, they're talking about your beard. What was Ibrahim's father talking about? Was he talking about something small or something big? <laughs> go make sajda to idols, boy. And does he lose his cool? Does he get angry? We have to learn how to be with our parents. As even when they call you away from deen, it doesn't matter if they're Muslim or not. dignified fashion. Obeying them is separate, respecting them is separate. Just because you didn't obey them for the sake of Allah, when it came to matters of halal and haram, or when it came to matter of iman and shirk, or kufr, just because you didn't obey them does not give you the right to get angry at them. You can't. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wala ilaha.